All right. So um, this paper is Feb March 2017, variant two, and we'll try to do four questions in this video and the rest of the questions in the other video. So the first question says, in a survey, 36 out of 120 randomly selected voters in Hungton said that if there were an election next week, they would vote for the Alpha Party. Calculate an appro approximate 90 percent confidence interval for the proportion of voters who would vote for the Alpha Party. So we have to find a confidence interval, but <clears throat> for the proportions. So yeah, this is not for the mu, this is not for the mean, this is for proportions. So first we have we know that the positive proportion is 36 over 120, that is 0 0.3. So a proportion, PS follows a proportion with your positive proportion as 0 0.3, that is the mean and your variance 0 0.3 into 0 0.7 upon 120. So P has always follows a proportion with <coughs> the positive proportion that over here is 0 0.3 and the variance. The variance is always P1 minus P upon n so yeah and our confidence interval is 90 percent that means k this is the region of p so this re this area is five percent and this area is five percent so we have to find the value the z value that corresponds to the area 95 percent right so your z value at this point is uh, 1.645 once you have this value all you have to do is PS minus the Z value and your standard deviation PS plus the Z value and the standard deviation your PS over here is 0 0.3, your Z value is 1.645, the standard deviation will be 0 root of 0 0.3 into 0 0.7 upon 120. Same over here, 0 0.3 plus 1.645 root of 0 0.3 into 0 0.7 upon 120 say so yes so this is how you solve this question and your answer will turn out to be 0 0.231 and p less than 0 0.369 so the only thing that you had to understand here was that uh, your PS is 0 0.3, 36 over 120. So yeah, then you, <clears throat> then PS follows a proportion of 0 0.3 and the range 0 0.3 into 0 0.7 upon 120. You find the Z value that corresponds to the area 0.95%. Uh, Why? Because the confidence interval is of 90%. That means that this area is 5% and this area is of 5%. So you find the Z value that corresponds to 0.95. You find the Z value, then you just plug it into the formula and you get your proportion. All right. Question number two is, Kareem has noted life spans in weeks of a large sample of certain insects. So we know that it's a large random sample. He carries out a test at one person significance level for, a population, for the population mean mu and his null hypothesis is mu equals to 6.4. The first part is given that Kareem's test is two tail, state the alternative hypothesis. So if it's two tail, that means it the change could be either positive, the change could be either negative. The mu could either be greater than 6.4 or it could be less than 6.4. So your alternative hypothesis will be H not H uh, alternative hypothesis is mu not equals to 6.4. Right. So 
Kareem finds that the value of the test, uh, test statistic is z, uh, of, is z equals to 2.43. So your z calculated is 2.43. Explain what conclusion he should draw. So first we'll find the z critical. The z critical. So this so this entire area is 0 0.995 because our significance level is 1% so 0.5% uh, on the 0.5% on this side 0.5% on this side so you find the z value uh, that corresponds to the area 0 0.995 and the value is 2.575 so your critical region this value is 2.575 right and your z calculated is 2.43 that is over here so it lies in the h naught region so the conclusion that you should draw over here is that since z calculated is greater than z critical you except H not which means that uh, we do not have enough evidence to include that our the value of the population mean has changed and that the population mean is equals to 6.4 so just one or two lines for this part one uh, you have to show your z critical value you find the z critical value by <clears throat> finding the z value that corresponds to the area 0.995 so Explain briefly when a one-tailed test is appropriate rather than a two-tailed test. So a one-tailed test is one uh, when you have to find uh, when you have to test if whether the mu has either increased or it has decreased, right? So don't only it it only has to be one. Ya to bada hai, the mu has increased or it has decreased, right? So so this answer for this part is simple. It's just that test when you, whenever you test for an increase or a decrease in mu, not both then you use a one tail test a total test is used uh, is used when uh, you know there is a change say yeah but you don't know what that change could be the change could be greater than the original mu it could be less than the original mu right so this is the answer for the last part all right so the third question is the length and centimeters of a certain type of snake is modeled by a random variable x with mean 52 and standard deviation 6.1 a random sample of 75 snakes is selected and the sample mean x bar is found. Find probability of x bar greater than 51 and less than 53. So first x follows a normal with mean 52 and standard deviation 6.1 squared then x bar follows a normal with mean 52 and variance 6.1 square upon 75 so uh, if x follows a normal x bar will also follow a normal so yeah, if x follows a binomial x bar will also follow a binomial if x follows a poisson x bar will also follow a poisson so whatever x follows x bar will exactly follow the same distribution right so then probability of x bar greater than 51 and less than 53 that means probability of x bar less than 53 minus probability of x bar less than 51 all right so 53 minus 52 upon 6.1 over root of 75 this is your first z value and minus and probability of z less than 51 minus 52 upon 6.4 under root 75 right so the z values that you get are z less than 1.42 minus probability of z less than minus 
four two. Basically, minus one point four two, one point four two. It's basically this region that you have to find. You use a calculator or the table to find the values, and the values turn out. The probably turn out turns out to be point zero point eight four four. Say yeah. Okay, the last part says explain why it was necessary to use central limit theorem in the solution to part one. Say yeah. So, uh, to the question didn't identify uh, it's modeled by which uh, x follows which distribution. It just said that a certain type of Snithers lengths are mo is modeled by random variable x with mean 52 and standard deviation 6.1. Say yeah, we didn't know uh, what was the kind of distribution that x follows. So one thing that we assumed over here is that x follows a normal distribution and the reason why we did that is that because n is large. So whenever n is very large, say um, basically if it's greater than 30 or if it's greater than 20, we say that x follows a normal distribution. Say, um, so this is why we use the central limit theorem over here that n is large. So we needed to assume that x follows a normal distribution. All right, so the last question for this video um, says that at a doctor's surgery, the number of missed appointments per day has a Poisson distribution. And in the past, mean number of missed appointments per day has been 0 0.9. So you, the lambda is 0 0.9 per day. Following some publicity, the manager carries out a hypothesis test to determine whether this mean has decreased. If there are fewer than three missed appointments in a randomly chosen five day period, she will conclude that mean has decreased. So first, if I draw the um, the bars, I can say that this bar is zero, this one's one, this one's two, three, four, five, and can go all the way to infinity because it's a Poisson distribution, right? So it says that if there are fewer than three missed appointments, if there are fewer than three missed appointments in a randomly chosen five day period, she will conclude that the mean has decreased. So this one, zero, one, two, three. So we can safely say that zero, one, two, and three constitute our critical region. So our critical region is basically x less than 3 or x less than equals to 2 right so the first part is find the probability of a type 1 error so a type 1 error probability of a type 1 error is basically your actual significance level and your actual significance level determines what's your critical region right so oh, I can say that the probabilities of 0, 1, and 2 is my actual significance level and my actual significance level is my type 1 error so all I need to do is find the probability of 0 from of x greater than equals to 0 to x less than equals to 2 right also it says that over a 5 chosen over a 5 day period right so my lambda is 0 0.9 times 5 that is 4.5 so my answer to this part becomes e to the power minus 4.5 bracket 1 plus 4.5 plus 4.5 squared upon 2 factorial right and when you solve this entire function the answer will turn out to be 0 1 seven three six so all i needed to understand was that my probability of type 1 error is my actual significance level and since the question said that if there are fewer than three missed appointments uh, i will conclude that the mean has decreased that means i will reject h naught say yeah so my critical region turns out to be zero one and two x less than three and x less than three is my uh, type 1 error so yeah the next part is state what is meant by type 1 error in this context so, yes, so the question is asking you the answer in the context of the uh, in the con context of the scenario so uh, 
we'll say that accepting that lambda has decreased in that is the number of missed appointments has decreased while that is not true say so, so we are rejecting h not we are saying that the number of missed appointments has the mean number of missed appointments has decreased right when that is not true so for one mark this is what you're going to write over here then it says that find the probability of a type 2 error if the mean number of missed appointments per day is 0 0.2 so the probability of a type 2 error is always the uh, acceptance region right the acceptance region with the new mean so the acceptance region over here is probability of x greater than 3 right because my critical region is x less than 3 that is sorry x greater than equals to 3 so my, because my critical region is x less than equals to 3 sorry x less than 3 0 1 and 2 so my acceptance region becomes x greater than equals to 3 right and my probability of a type 2 error is going to be x greater than equals to 3 with the new mean say with the new lambda so per day is 0 0.2 we are looking over 5 days so my lambda becomes 1 so this answer is 1 minus probability of x less than 3 say so yeah, and this becomes 1 minus e to power minus 1 1 plus 1 plus 1 upon 2 factorial so your answer for type 2 error is 0 0.0803 to 3 significant figures and this is your answer for the type 2 error. So type 2 error is basically the acceptance region, the white part that is this part all the way to infinity, say here with the new lambda. The new lambda per day is 0 0.2 and we are looking over five over a 5 day period so the new lambda becomes 1. So probability of x greater than or equals to 3 with the lambda equals to 1. So x greater than or equals to 3 with the lambda equals to 1, 1 minus probability of x less than less than 3 so 1 minus e to power minus 1 in the bracket 1 plus 1 plus 1 upon 2 factorial and you get your answer 0 0.80 0 0.0803 that's it for this video we'll do the next three questions in the next part